If there's anything that my pastor taught me, it is that we do not normally recognize greatness while it is among us. I could not be more honored, humbled, excited to introduce any person on earth to this worldwide television audience and to you here in this great local church than evangelist Reinhard Bonnke, a man who has spent his life preaching the true gospel of Jesus Christ to a hurting world. He has preached to crowds in excess of 1.5 million people in one night. I asked him how his last crusade went. He said, well, we only had 100,000. I said, 100,000? He said, yes, in the choir. <laughs> he is a man above men on a mission from God who has heard the clarion call to bring this mighty anointing back to the United States of America. And I am believing for crusades of hundreds of thousands a night in America and signs and wonders and miracles and wherever he is and whatever he is doing I pray God let me just be on the sidelines shouting would you welcome God's man evangelist Reinhard Bonk Thank you very, very, very much. I'm blessed and I'm honored to be here tonight. Thank you, Pastor Rod. And God bless us all. This, this is the day of the Lord. Amen. And America will be saved. Hallelujah. America will be saved. We thank the Lord for the cross. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I must say I, I was so very much blessed when Pastor Parsley was speaking. And uh, I wished he would just have continued <laughs> because he is a mighty man of God. Amen. <laughs> Thank God for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But one thing we must never forget. No matter how much the Lord blesses us, He has always done it in the name of the One. In the name of the one who has said, without me, you can do nothing. Amen. Our blessed Lord Jesus Christ, and he and we, including myself, we give all the glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. I just have got one or two things I like to share also to those that are watching across the globe. God bless you all. I believe with all of my heart that the best in the kingdom of God is still to come. And we are just at the very verge of it. When I started out in Africa, I was told by hundreds of people, Reinhardt, you can't do that. 
go from Cape Town to Cairo and will win millions of people for Jesus. You can do it. You can do it. And there was always that still small voice inside of me said, don't listen to them because I am with you. I'm with you. And, you know, I allowed the doubters to doubt. And I doubted their doubts. But I put my trust in Jesus. And then I saw God, God shake nations uh, in a way that was thought to be impossible. Since the year 87... Since we um, are keeping records of people who have received Jesus as their Savior by completing a decision card. Just completing a decision card. From 87 to now, it's now 77 million and counting. And counting. Hallelujah! It's the cross. It's the gospel of the cross. Hallelujah. And then God spoke to me. America's time has come. And we will do it. In the name of Jesus. And to the honor and glory of his name. From city to city, from coast to coast, from stadium to stadium. America will be saved. The Lord gave me a poem. May I read it to you? A poem for America. I'm actually not a poet, but it, it just flows. Jesus shed his blood so precious for sinners and the poorest wretches. The only means, so we are told, to break the devil's stranglehold. Jesus sculpted our land with a nail print in his hand even in the highest places we can find redemption traces the cross of christ is our faith's foundation a solid rock for our nation america to jesus come be marked by him not just by anyone yeah. hallelujah yeah. hallelujah I tell you, I am so deeply moved by what we have seen here with the cross. To see all these letters here with the cloths. Pastor Parsley just told me while we were sitting there together. He said that 350,000 prayer cloths have arrived. 350,000. And our God is well able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. And He will do it tonight. He will. He will. He will. I can't help myself. I've got to speak to you for a few minutes about the cross. I can't help myself. I'm an evangelist, you know. (laughs) 
Every time I take a microphone, I only have one desire burning in my heart. I want hell empty and heaven full. That's it. That's what took Jesus to the cross. Jesus did not come to save religion. He came to save people. People. The name of the game is not real estate. It's people. It's people. And the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But to us that are saved, it is the power of God. The power of God. I was preaching in Germany in a church years back. I sat in the first row in that building. I looked back behind me was a cross, an empty cross. I like empty crosses. Jesus hung there, but no more. He sits at the right hand of the Father, high and lifted up. And while I sat there, it was as if the Holy Spirit touched my eyes. And I looked at that cross, and looked at that cross, and suddenly I saw it. I saw the two beams. Pastor Roger spoke so wonderfully about the beams. Let me add my five cents, please. I suddenly realized that all humanity's um, existence is wrapped up in the symbol of the cross. Yes, the cross consists of two beams. One horizontal and the one vertical. And suddenly I realized that that horizontal beam was a gigantic minus. And that's our part of the cross. Because we were born with a minus. We, 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 we are seeking love because we haven't got love. We are seeking peace because we haven't got peace. It's that big fat minus the Bible calls sin. We come short of the glory of God. We miss the target. We try hard, but we miss the target. It's the minus. And we were born with this minus, all of us. It's a hereditary minus. But God saw, He saw our agony. He saw our despair. He heard our cries. If there is a God in heaven, Please, show yourself and help us. And he did. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He sent his only begotten son. He couldn't redeem us with silver and gold. Do you know why? Because it wouldn't have cost him anything. God can't pay for us in gold because he can just make some new one. Cost him nothing. But he gave his only begotten son. It was the highest, highest price he could have ever paid. A very painful thing for him. And then Jesus was born. It's all history. 
And then Jesus did something most wonderful. And that is this. Outside of Jerusalem. On the low hill called Golgotha or Calvary, Jesus crossed through our minds from top to bottom. And turned it into a plus. The cross is the God's logo of love for all of us. Hallelujah. The cross is God's plus sign. If God be for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah for the cross. It shall never suffer loss. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? And now I suddenly saw the gospel in, in the new light. Turning a minus into a plus is something. That, that means negative is turned to a, into positive. Sickness is turned into healing. Sin into salvation. Hate into love. Brokenness into wholeness. Rottenness into beauty. Death into life and hell to heaven. It's all wrapped up in the cross. It's all wrapped up in the cross. I tell you, there is no better message. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And in the wake of this, I discovered something more. I discovered a little piece of divine arithmetic. I'll give you a little lesson in divine arithmetic. Let me do it this way. I alone am lost. But I plus, that's the cross, Jesus equal a child of God. Hallelujah. Another one. I alone am weak. But I plus the cross. Jesus equal more than a conqueror. It's the cross. The cross of our blessed Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful? I'm not, I'm an evangelist. I don't ask the people, why don't you come to Jesus? I ask them, how can you stay away? He is so wonderful. Turning your minus into a plus. And failure into success. And pains into healing. Oh, hallelujah. Are you blessed? And then the blood of Jesus. I just can't let go. You see, that was the price for our redemption. Jesus didn't have the, 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 the redemption price in his pocket. 
He had no money in his pocket because when he wanted to illustrate a sermon with a coin, he had to borrow one. But he had a certain kind of blood that was so, so special. It could not be, uh, uh, it could not be placed into a blood group. It was singular. It was absolutely unique. It's the only blood the Bible calls precious. Medical science tells us that a baby gets the blood from the father. Wow. Now, who was the father of Jesus? Wait a minute. Here is, here is a secret. If Joseph had been the father of Jesus, there would be no power in the blood of Jesus. And we here would now waste our time. But Joseph was not the father of Jesus. Luke takes great care to explain to us how Jesus was conceived. The testimony of Mary herself, the Holy Spirit came upon her and she conceived of the Holy Ghost. Therefore, the blood of Jesus was precious. There's power in the blood of Jesus. Power in the blood of Jesus! Hey. This is awesome. I must tell you a little story, something that happened to me that illustrates this point so fantastically well. I was invited by national television on one of the public channels to come for, to come for uh, uh, religious discussions. They said religious experts were discussing. I don't know how they picked me because I never featured as a religious expert. But all of a sudden I was invited. And then there was the moderator, there were the other... Uh, participants and we were introduced to each other and then we went on the air national television and opposite s uh, me sat uh, a certain gentleman being an atheist he told me so that he was an atheist you know my definition for atheism it's 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 intellectual vandalism It's the people with those sp spray cans who spray, God is dead, God is dead, God is dead. One man in Germany said to me, haven't you yet heard that God is dead? I said, really? And the, I know the Bible says we mustn't answer, we mustn't sp speak uh, as a f like a fool to a fool, but that day I couldn't behave. <laughs> I said to him, listen, if God is dead, why don't you bury him? He looked at me. He didn't know what to say, but I knew what to say. I said, mister, I know why you don't bury God, because you cannot find his corpse. Because he is not dead, even as we speak, he is sitting upon the throne of all thrones. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, let me go back. We were hardly on the air when the atheist challenged me. He said, Bonky. 
you're preaching that there's power in the blood of Jesus. I said, I do. He said, I don't believe it. And I will tell you why. He said, the blood of Jesus is already 2,000 years in this world. But today the world is worse than it was 2,000 years ago. That's why I say there is no power in the blood of Jesus. That moment the Holy Spirit came over me. I said, Mr. Hold it. I need to answer. I said, Mr. There's also a lot of soap in this world, yet many people are still dirty. He said, Mr. I said, Mr. I want to explain to you how soap works. If I am next to a piece of soap, I am not automatically clean. I said, mister, even if you should work in a soap factory, you are not automatically clean. I said, mister, if you want to know what soap can do, you've got to do something. I said, you must stretch out your hand. Take the soap. And apply it. Apply it. And if you do, you will jump up. Throw up your arms, you will shout and sing and say with hundreds of millions of people, there is power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. Hey. The atheist looked at me. He said, oh, he said, Bonky. When you speak, I feel something emanating. He said, I've been wondering what that may be. He said, I want to be honest with you. I met a few other evangelists, but I didn't feel anything emanating. And I think I know now why. The evangelists I met before, he said, I think they were amateurs and you are a professional. <laughs> listen, listen. I said, mister, you are wrong again. Because I tell you what I am. I am a living piece of evidence that there is power in the blood of Jesus. That's it. Behold the Lamb of God. After that, at the television show, I was walking to my car in the parking lot. And as I was walking, suddenly somebody tapped me on my shoulder. I shot around. Who was it? My atheist. And although we were all alone, there was no soul in our sight. He whispered into my ear. He said, Ponky, would you be willing to pray for me? There is power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. We serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God. 
It's a big mistake to remove crosses from our churches. What a mistake. You know, to, to portray a, a crossless gospel is a betrayal of the one who hung on it. It's the kernel of the gospel. It's the heart of the gospel of salvation. I've seen presidents receiving Jesus as their savior with tears streaming out of their eyes. I've preached in houses of parliament. I made altar calls. I, before the first time I, pr I preached in the house of parliament, I said, oh Lord, I, I can't just do as if I'm in a gospel crusade. This is a house of parliament. What about protocol? And that moment the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, no protocol, make an altar call. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. And I want to say to anyone who needs cleansing, whoever you are, wherever you are, I've got good news for you. You know what? Jesus didn't come to shame sinners. He came to save sinners. He didn't come and pointed his finger at, at, at the worst sinners and said, You rotten sinners. Never. When the prodigal son came home, I read it when I realized it. I read it again and again and again and again. And I found myself on my knees. I realized the father didn't say, now come on, confess all your sins. He didn't even want to know what his sins were. The father knew he was prodigal. The father knew he was lost. But he also knew he had found his way home. That changed my whole attitude. We are always surprised when we see sin as sin. Now what else are they supposed to do? <laughs> Jesus knows that sin is sin and he came to save them. And he died for them. Before they ever knew him including ourselves and we thank God for it Jesus we thank you for the cross salvation flows from it right across America I believe it with all of my heart I may not be uh, uh, the best known evangelist at all actually I don't care and I've got such a strange name on top of it. And such a funny accent. But I'll tell you, I will blast the gospel. I will! And the Lord will do mighty, mighty miracles of salvation and of healing. You see, miracles, miracles are not just, uh, what shall I say, some attachment of a sort when it comes to the gospel. Some people think it's an attachment that one can screw off or screw on according to the congregation.
Miracles are not the bell on the bicycle. It's the whole machine. You know what I mean? Everything is miraculous in the gospel. Everything in the kingdom of God. Look at Jesus. Not just that he was born of a virgin. Absolutely unique. But that he did his own family planning in heaven with the Trinity. Amazing. What a wonderful, wonderful Jesus. By his stripes we are healed. I want to tell you what the Lord spoke to me tonight when I came in. He took my mind to John chapter 6, the feeding of the 5,000. There were 5,000 men. But you know where men are? They are always women. And where women are, they're always children. And women and children also have stomachs. And they were also hungry. And they also needed to be fed. So it means there were not just 5,000 people. There were, scholars say, possibly 20,000. 20,000 people. And then the little boy gave those five loaves. I think bread rolls, something of that sort. Not another two pound bread each. No mother is so foolish to give for her son for breakfast five such big loaves. And two, two fish. They, they were surely not tunas. You know, they were sprats. And put it into the most capable hands of all. Then Jesus thanked the, f the Father, broke the bread, and it says, gave it to the disciples. Matthew 14 allows this conclusion. He gave it to the disciples. He gave them equal portions. Just crumbs, a few crumbs. Behind them were the 20,000 people in groups of 50. And here Jesus comes and gives the 12 disciples uh, crumbs and maybe just the tail of the little fish to Peter. Jesus smiles. And then Peter does this. And he was shocked. He saw the first man in the first row. He looked like an empty fridge. And he had crumbs in his hands. And then Jesus says, give ye them to eat. And you know what happened? They then turned in slow motion. Very slow motion. To face the crowd. But I tell you, you can face any crowd if you first have faced Jesus. And I think from the line of the disciples to the first line of the hungry people were maybe 10 yards. Now how do you walk 10 yards? To such a problem with crumbs in your hands. And that is why so many Christians become, become offended. 
But they walked. And here comes Peter to that big empty fridge. He stoops down. That man grabs it. Puts it into his mouth. And the next moment, Peter's hands are full again. He grabs again. The hands are full again. The miracles happened in the hands of the disciples. The multiplication happened in the hands of the disciples. But this is what the Lord spoke to me when I came in. This is what he said. He said, 20,000 were there. And everyone received a miracle. Everyone. Everyone. And I prophesy. Here are 350,000. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I claim. And I proclaim. In the name of Jesus. Receive your miracle. Receive your healing. You shall not die. You shall live and proclaim the works of the Lord. Whatever your bondage, whatever your chains, they will be broken. Oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is your victory? 350,000 miracles in Jesus' mighty name. We claim it. Let's lift our hands together. Let's claim it together. Come on, open your mouth. Let Jesus hear your voices. Chantoropo kosi alavasana. Oh Lord, I thank you for the rain. Every drop is a miracle. In Jesus' name, 20,000 miracles to 20,000 people, 350,000 miracles to 350,000 people. So be it now in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. May I say something else? And that is this. If someone needs cleansing from sin through the precious blood of Jesus, you're not yet saved. You want to get saved. I would just love. It's the greatest honor in my life. I wished I could put my arm around your shoulder and take you to Jesus. And you will meet him right there at his wonderful feet. And he will embrace you and receive you. If you want to receive Jesus now, just lift your hand. I will just pray for you. I will ha cannot ask you to come forward, but I will pray for you wherever you are. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Just keep your hand up. Let's pray together. Repeat after me, please. Say it after me. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you that you shed your precious blood for me. I now accept your offer of salvation. I put my trust and my faith alone in you. I believe with my heart what I now speak with my mouth. 
Jesus is my savior. I belong to him. And he belongs to me. Forever and forevermore. In Jesus name. And everybody shout amen. Amen. Cancer is disappearing. That tumor on the left breast has disappeared right now. Check it out. A hunchback has disappeared this very moment. Check it out. Rise from your wheelchair. You can run and you will run and not be weary. Miracles happen everywhere. 350,000 and more. In Jesus mighty name. Receive out of his fullness. Your fullness. Out of his fullness. What a joy to be here. And what a blessing. Were you blessed tonight? To God be the glory. To God be the glory.